Online mastering is everywhere at this point. Starting with services such as Lander, it seems like more and more big companies are using this service to squeeze every last penny out of independent musicians and aspiring producers. Is it possible for your music to stand out without using these tools to boost the loudness and fullness of your mixes? Is automated mastering worth upwards of $100 per year or a $300 plugin before even getting paid for your music? I'm Wesley from Linux Creative, and today I'm going to try and answer all these questions, but I'm also 100% confident what I'm going to share with you will improve your mixes immediately. When it comes to online mastering services, I've personally always scoffed at them. Aside from preying on artists who want to do right by their fans, I've always assumed that A, if I'm uploading a track to be mastered without any controls or settings, it simply can't work well across every genre, and B, I can probably do a better job with a few stock plugins on my master track than whatever an automated online service can conjure. Having recently stumbled across a unique open source self-hosted alternative to these services, I decided now would be a good time to put this to the test. Matchering is a powerful tool that lets you analyze and match the frequency response and loudness of any track from a convenient Docker container. Not only will I show you how to use matchering yourself, but I'll compare the results to some of the other paid services as well as my own master track effects chain. Developed by a passionate audio engineer determined to reduce repetitive work involved in mastering electronic music, Matchering is the result of years of research and experimentation. From its innovative early use of MATLAB and digital signal processing techniques, to its open source Python library for developers and clever approach to stereo bass adjustment, matchering is a tool like no other. Let's explore the ins and outs of matchering and I'll show you how you can use it to take your mixes to the next level. I'll also show you a unique workflow to harness the power of matchering to transform your music in ways you never thought possible. First, I'll show you a quick comparison between matchering and a few of its prominent paid competitors. I don't want to waste too much time comparing these results since a hundred other YouTubers have done that to death. Instead, I'll very quickly show you the kind of results you can expect out of matchering versus Lander, Emastered, and my own MasterFX chain. First, I want to thank my friend John for providing me with stems to mix for this video. He's an incredible guitarist and I hope to collaborate with him in future videos. Without naming them, here are the six different versions of the mastered track. To me, the first two sound a bit tinny and lack in low in energy. The fifth one sounds a bit muddy, so I'll eliminate that one as well. I like the third one, but it seems a bit squash, so I'd like the loudness to be dialed back a bit. The fourth one seems to hit that sweet spot, and it's pretty similar to the sixth. Here's how each of these masters were achieved, starting with those I liked the least. Number five was created with eMastered, a paid subscription service costing over $100 per year. It sounds pretty muddy and awful to me. Number one was created with Matchering, referencing a song by the Eagles. Number two was Matchering, referencing a Chris Isaac track. In both of these cases, I think the mix sounded good, but just a bit thin and not as modern and loud as I wanted. 
So I used a Gorillaz track as the reference for number three and really enjoyed the sound, but felt the loudness was a little bit over the top. I'll come back to this in a bit after I mentioned that number six was created with Lander. While I don't personally find this service would be valuable for me, I do think it did a good job with this track in particular. As far as the EQ and overall balance, it's the closest to the best result I got out of matchering. Last, number four is my own master effects chain. I'll talk a bit more about my process in a moment, but let's get matchering installed so you can start using it yourself. To install matchering on your computer, it's going to be a whole lot easier if you're using Linux. In fact, I'm not even going to cover how to install it on Windows or Mac. I'll be focusing on how to install matchering on Ubuntu Linux, but the steps will be similar for other Linux distributions. First, you'll need to install Docker Community Edition on your machine. There are detailed installation instructions in the Docker manual, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to just ignore them entirely and install Docker from Ubuntu's package repository, then run matchering on top. You can see the machine I'm running isn't even on the latest LTS version of Ubuntu. It's Ubuntu 22.04, so this should work for just about anyone. First, type sudo apt install docker.io. You may be prompted to enter your user password. Once Docker Engine is installed, you can copy the single line command from the matchering GitHub repo to your command line. To paste into most Linux terminals, use Control shift v or right-click and paste. This command will download the Docker image for matchering and start the service once it's finished. Once the matchering installation finishes, you can check that the container is running by typing docker ps. This will display information about any and all Docker containers running on your system. You should also be able to navigate to localhost colon 8360 in your browser to access the matchering front end and get started. Since I installed this on another computer on my network, my address looks slightly different. From here, it's as simple as adding your mix track and reference material. To prepare your target file for matchering, just make sure you have 3 dB of headroom in your mix. It's best to avoid any master limiters or saturation before using matchering, so if you use any of those for mixing, just bypass them and make sure your master isn't clipping or reduce your master track's gain until you see negative 3 dB in its meter at the loudest sections. Export your track as a WAV file, then upload the exported WAV onto the target side of matchering. Next, select a similar track you'd like to use as your reference. It's a good idea to match the BPM key and components as well as you can, although you don't have to be exact. Just select a track that you own that sounds similar to something you'd like your track to sound like. Matchering will start to process your target track and provide you with a preview once it's complete. You can download your mastered track in either 16 or 24-bit WAV. I like to repeat this process with a few reference tracks to give me a few different options to choose from. Having three to five different results can help you decide which one you like best and ultimately help you to the next step. Before you move on though, you may want to stop the Docker container running on your machine. You can use the docker stop command with the container's name after to stop the container. If you'd like to remove the container entirely, you can use the docker rm command with the container's name after. When I type docker ps-a, you can see that docker container has been removed. If you'd like to remove all data that this container generated, type docker volume prune, and that'll get rid of any volumes. While it's easy to feed a reference and target into matchering, I believe the more interesting matchering work comes afterward. Pulling multiple matchering exports into a session and choosing your favorite is a great step in the right direction, but let's take this concept even further. First, I'll put all of my results in a blank session as individual tracks In Reaper, it's easy to normalize them all to the same LUFS level. I'm using negative 13 here as it seems to be the industry standard for most streaming services. Next, I can listen and compare each track by using the exclusive solo option of Reaper. I can either right click and select this option or hold Ctrl and Alt on my keyboard while clicking the solo button on each track. In this way, I can eliminate masters I don't like and ultimately choose the one that I like most.
Once I have a master that I'm happy with, I'll load it into my track's mixing section and try matching its loudness, stereo width, and RMS with my master track's effects chain, and making small tweaks in the mix. I find that using my own track as a reference makes the act of using a reference track much more valuable since it's a one-to-one -one comparison. To do this, I'll pull my reference into Reaper in a new track, rename it, and tweak its color for visual separation, and make sure it's routed directly to my hardware outputs instead of the master bus. When I solo the track and play it back, you can see the audio is not playing through the master. Since I can use Ctrl and Alt to exclusively solo my tracks, I can shift click over multiple tracks, then use this trick to quickly switch between my reference track and my whole mix. Next, since the track matching provided is a bit too loud for my taste, I'll normalize it to my preferred luffs target. I'm going to set this to negative 9 as a matter of preference. Again, most streaming services normalize to negative 13, so that might be a better target for your mixes. Now, when I compare my mix to the master, you can hear the slight differences a little bit better. Let's take a look at what I did on my master effects chain to attempt to match this matching export. This is ultimately how I prefer using matching and how I think it can improve anyone's mixes. I started by adding a little bit of wave shaping or saturation. This can help add a little bit of analog harmonic content to the mix. Don't overdo it with saturation, but it can make a surgical mix sound a bit more lively and help glue things together. Speaking of glue, I used a little bit of compression with an 1175 compressor right after the wave shaper. This helps the dynamics of the track really glue together better. Since the mix was sounding a bit muddy, I followed that with a multiband compressor that's pulling up the mids and highs a little bit. Last, I added an EQ with a high shelf to add a little bit more air to the mix, and to achieve my desired loudness, pushed all this through a limiter, watching the loudness meter while listening to make sure things weren't too squashed. Some other ideas of how you can use matching to improve your mixing and mastering skills are as follows. You can get a pretty good idea of what's missing from your track if you reverse the phase of the matching export and play it with your master. This will cause the matching reference to phase cancel any of the same content that exists in your mix and let you know the difference. You'll have to do some more complex routing to get this all set up, putting your whole project into a folder track, but I hope you're seeing the value of this tool since it's free and open source. Another really fantastic use case for matching is to match the relative loudness, stereo width, and RMS of one track to others in the same release. If you've stuck around to the end, I want to share my excitement for this tool a bit more widely and encourage all of you to try it out. I've left a Docker container running on a server where you can try matching out yourself. I didn't allocate a ton of resources, so try not to overload it, but it's now live at matching.linuxcreative.com. I'll leave this container running until it becomes a problem or dies some other horrible death, but for now, enjoy using it.
I'm also excited to announce that you can share your experiences using Matchering, share resources, ask questions, and just get to know each other on the new community forum. That's forum.lenuxcreative.com. Until next time, keep creating, keep learning, and happy hacking. Mm -hmm.